Hey guys, welcome to Friday Night Live. Hola, como estas? Uh, bienvenido a la noche del viernes en vivo. Um, there is no one Spanish uh, tuned in from what I know, but they are more than welcome to tune in and now they're going to feel even more uh, gassed because I've gotten involved with my flexing. Anyway, uh, how are you? Um, how has Lockdown 2.0 been treating you? Have you been learning new skills? Have you been making anything? Uh, can you now make cakes and things like that? Um, can you? Have you been studying? Have you been working out? Have you been gaming nonstop? Have you been eating and sleeping nonstop? I have done all of the above um, so far. And uh, as you can see, I've also grown a nice little beard. Thank you for noticing. I, I, I like yours too, um, Maddie. Uh, anyway, um, we'll crack on. Uh, we won't... Uh, yeah, I guess we won't uh, dawdle too much longer. Um, if you're new here, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you for uh, thank you for joining in. Um, I hope you feel welcome and at home, or as as at home as possible online. Uh, we're just going to dive straight into um, some worship uh, or a time of worship now. Uh, so, without further ado, I hand over to the band. I hope you enjoy, it, guys. <laughs>
awesome guys. Uh, how do you find them? I'll be honest, it's the first time I've actually heard about them this week. But I thought they were really cool. Let us know what you thought in the comment section. Personally, I thought they were class. Or as some cavemen that we might know may say, class. Anyway, uh, moving on, we've got to preach in a few minutes. Um, but before that, I'll just let you know a couple of things. We've got... Um, We've got youth on Sunday, this Sunday. Uh, it'll be straight after church. So if you don't know what time that is, that's another YouTube live stream about half ten. And that'll be gone for an hour or so. And it'll be straight on after that, from what I know. And the other thing I've got to mention is next week, next Friday, we've also got another Friday Night Live where we'll be carrying on with our refuel series. If you want to know anything else about that, um, either email in or drop us a message on Kings1066 Youth on Instagram. But other than, other than that, I'm going to hand over to Dan, or as we love to call him here, G Lover, uh, now. So, over to you, Glover. Hey guys, thank you so much, Alfie, for uh, what you've done so far this evening. It's been really, really good. Hope you guys have had a good week. Um, bit of a strange time, isn't it, with lockdown round two? It doesn't feel like a proper lockdown, doesn't it? But Hey, we're going to follow the rules. We're going to be good and all that jazz. I'm just going to share a little bit about December plans. Um, as everything can change within the government guidelines, we're not 100% sure, but I thought I'd let you know a bit of an update on that. So the plan is we're going to have a couple more live streams, a couple more refuel talks. Then the plan is on December 11th, we are going to be back doing in-person events. Fingers crossed. And we're thinking about doing uh, another kind of Christmas movie night. A bit like what we did before, uh, just all Christmassy themes, and we might do Christmas jumpers and things like that. So that's to look forward to. Then on the 18th, you might remember we had to cancel our firework night due to lockdown, but the fireworks have not been used yet. And we're thinking of ending the year uh, on a bang. We're going to have a firework night Christmas extravaganza, fingers crossed. It'll be a drive-in style, so you can bring your parents, your guardians, whoever it is with you for those nights. Now, like I say, that's all government guideline dependent. They might happen, it might not. And so we just want to give you a heads up of what's to come. Of course, we've still got all our Youth on Sunday talks. We're going to be continuing on our Matthew series. And we have loved these talks. They've been fantastic. The team have really, really given it their all. They've really kind of spent time kind of seeking, praying, and going through the Word of God and just saying, hey, what is it each thing says? And so we're going to be continuing that on in January as well. In the new year, we're hopefully going to be running in-person youth alphas. We're still kind of finalising some of the detail on that, but that's to look forward to as well. We are in an exciting time for youth, whether it's in person or online. If it's not um, in person, then we'll be sure to let you know what the plans are for the coming weeks. But enough of that and the plans. Let's hand over to the wonderful Ben Garlic with this evening's talk. Hey guys, my name's Ben. It's lovely to uh, be speaking with you tonight. Wish you was in person, but uh, hey ho, best we can do. Um, uh, I'm 31. I live in Battle. I um, work in uh, kind of sales, and I've got three kids: William, Elizabeth Rose, and Annabelle. You can probably hear them a little bit in the background. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, I've got a wife, Catherine, and. Um, uh, yeah, one day we'd love to um, uh, see you guys in person. Um, tonight, I just want to share a little bit with you about what Jesus has been speaking to me about when it comes to being his disciple. And I'll be honest, some of this has been easy and some of it's been quite quite tough. Um, the word disciple isn't really a word that we use much today. To be a disciple of someone means to kind of follow, but more than that, to imitate, to be like uh, uh, someone, to learn from and to live with that person. And that's what Jesus wants for all of us, to live with him, to do as he does and to care about the stuff that he cares about. So what does Jesus care about? Well, if I ask you that question right now about your brother or your sister or your mum or your dad or, or maybe your good friends, I'm sure you'd be able to answer pretty quick. But what about Jesus? What does he care about? Well, let's take a look. Um, if you've got a Bible, then open it to Matthew 5. If not, don't worry, I'm going to read it out. And it says this. Now, when Jesus saw a big crowd that was in front of him, he went up onto a mountain and he sat down and his disciples were around him and he began to teach them. He said, um, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and who thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you and say naff stuff about you because of me, because of Jesus. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for other people who went before you have been insulted in the same way. And then Jesus goes on and describes how we can make a difference because of all that stuff, how we can live that stuff out. He says, let me tell you why you're here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours in the world. If we lose our saltiness, how can people taste godliness? If we've lost our usefulness, we'll end up in the trash. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out God colours in the world. God isn't a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers... Don't you think, um, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm going to put you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep your house open. Be generous with your lives. And by opening up to others, it will prompt people to open up to God, our generous Father in heaven. So I know that was a long bit of the Bible, but that's a really key bit. It's known as the Sermon on the Mount. It's the largest single bit of teaching from Jesus in the whole of the New Testament, actually. So if you've never read it, I encourage you to get stuck in and give it a go. There's loads in it, which is groundbreaking, totally new for the time. And to be honest, it's still pretty revolutionary now. The first bit I read are the famous words of the Beatitudes. That's what they're called, which start with blessed are those. These are probably some of the most well-known and loved verses in the Bible. It's a passage which sometimes has been described as God's manifesto. A manifesto is kind of a set of promises and actions that someone says they'll do. Political parties come out with them on the run up to elections. You may have heard a little bit about it between Biden and Trump in the US elections. Um, and Jesus isn't quite making the same thing as a political manifesto, but it's kind of similar in that he tries to express the sort of world that Jesus wants to bring. And it describes the difference he wants to make in our lives. And what a difference Jesus describes. Jesus goes on to talk about the effects that following God's manifesto would have on everyone around us. Now God's been speaking to, to me a lot about how others should feel the difference that Jesus makes in my life. And that bit of the Bible breaks it down in, in two ways. So first... Let's have a quick history lesson. In prehistoric times, uh, a man stumbled across a strange substance occurring naturally in the landscape. It right, picks up a rock. And it only produced a pleasing sensation on the tongue. But it seemed to be able to stop meat and fish rotting when they were rubbed or buried in it. So what did he find? Salt. Salt was often... Uh, included as part of religious rites of the Greeks and the Romans and indeed the Jews. And it's um, in the past, it's been really pri highly prized and valued. In fact, in some Asian countries, it was it was really heavily taxed. And actually, people used to be paid in it. The word salary was used to refer to a soldier's allowance of salt in the Roman army. They were actually paid in salt. And in the time of Jesus, the main industry... Uh, uh, the place where he was living um, was the salting of fish. Now coming back to the Bible, um, Jesus goes on. He says, you, us, are the light of the world. And in the times of Jesus and his disciples, travel at night, it wasn't easy. It wasn't safe. In the day, there were always landmarks to look out for. Mountains or rivers, outcrops of of rock or, or towns in the distance that they could see. 
But at night, there were no road signs. There were no cat signs in the middle of the road to keep you from straying. There were no bright street lights illuminating the road. And there wasn't even any Google Maps. I mean, wow, check that out. And if you've ever been camping in, in Scotland or somewhere similarly like remote and looked out at the sky after dark, you'll get the impression of what it must have been like. With, without flashlight, even the brightest stars made movement difficult. And when you're camping, tent guy ropes are very easy to fall over. Now these pictures that Jesus paints about salt, us being salt and about light, talk about being noticed, about having a, a purpose, about how we are essential um, in bringing good things into the lives of those around us, about how we're supposed to make a difference to people we live with. Now we can either live for today, taking what we can from life, or we can live by faith, trusting in God who's promised to supply all that we could ever need. And Jesus has outlined what having a living, vibrant faith in him looks like. But it doesn't look similar to what the world would say. Blessed are we when we're poor in spirit. Blessed are we when we're mourning. Blessed when we're meek. Blessed when we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, not success. Blessed when we're showing mercy. Blessed when we've got pure hearts. Blessed when we're helping make peace. And blessed when we're facing persecution and tough times. What an absolute reversal in basic human values. It's a lifestyle that the political leaders of the time wouldn't have even contemplated and one which seems alien to those that we kind of see online or, or we watch on tv today right now we're taught that success belongs to the strong it belongs to those who have it all together but that's not what jesus says jesus says that his world belongs to the mink the broken the struggling I don't know about you, but now more than ever, I feel less together. I feel like I've, I've got it less under control. I'm less certain. So this is such an encouragement to me, and I hope it is to you. We're called to take these values, this God manifesto, and put them into practice in our everyday life. There's a famous Christian philosopher who once said this. If the New Testament... The end bit of the Bible explains what is meant by a true Christian. Then to be a true Christian in secret is about as impossible as firing a cannon in secret. And I don't know whether you've ever thought about it like this, but your families need you. They need you right now. They need you to pray for them. And they need you to share what the Bible says about the different challenges we face in life. Your friends, they need you. In fact, they're a bit screwed without you. They need you to tell them about this person, Jesus, and the difference that he can make. We need to spread ourselves and our faith, our lifestyle around our families, our schools, our colleges and our jobs. And in this way, we become a seasoning by which God will taste something, no, sorry, by which others will taste something of the love of God. We can be encouragers when someone is um, struggling around us or maybe they're hurting. And we should be prepared to stand up for the little man and be counted when we see corruption or greed in, in our world. Now, if that's what it's like to be salt, then let me tell you something about light. I don't know whether you guys like science. I do. And the scientific definition of darkness is the absence of light. Now, what that means is that... They can't exist in the same place at the same time. Simply impossible. Light replaces darkness. And the Bible often uses the, the contrast between light and dark to show the absolute difference between God being good and, and evil. And to follow Jesus is to move out of darkness, drawn by that light on top of a hill. We're called to be that light in our, our friends, our neighbours and our relatives by the way that we live. 
Now maybe for some of us today, Jesus is challenging us to make his light more evident in, in our life. Maybe for some of us it's time to stop swearing. And maybe for others it's time to stop joining in the gossip about people at school or at work or with friends. For some of us it might be about asking God to give us compassion for people who are hurting or who don't agree with us. Jesus is asking us to follow him by being honest, by working hard, by being joyful, by showing love in action, by taking time to talk to people when they're in need or of someone to listen. And ultimately, by telling people about the amazing Jesus we have a relationship with. And most of the time, this stuff isn't easy. It will mean being considered maybe a bit weird and it will mean being looked down upon. It means going places you wouldn't want to go, like hanging out with the unpopular person. And it means doing things that we don't want to do, like saying no to getting drunk at a party whilst everyone else is taking in as much as they can. When we take, make these little decisions to follow Jesus, we become his light to those around us. And I just want to encourage you, in this time when the normal way forward with exams and uni and then a career seems so uncertain, Know that you go with Jesus. He's right there beside you. And you can be the difference that this world needs. I pray that you would be filled with the courage and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. There we go, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks to the band for leading us so well in worship. It was really powerful. And thank you to Ben for leading us in the talk as well. Again, really powerful message there. Also... Thank you for you guys for tuning in. Uh, it wouldn't, obviously wouldn't happen without you guys. So, yeah, no, let us know how you felt about today. Just uh, go nuts in the comments for a bit. Um, if you've got any questions, again, or anything that you need to let us know about, again, message us on Instagram or so. Um, again, like, comment, share, subscribe, that kind of stuff on Kings as well. That's always helpful. Other than that, that's it from us this week. I wish you another lovely uh, week week or so in lockdown. Hopefully it's not going to be too much longer. I really hope so too. Um, but yeah, I'll, we will see you guys on Sunday. Might forget Sunday. Or next week as well. And next week. Alright guys, take it easy.